All right, welcome to today's game. Now we're talking about Unstuck all month long, so we're gonna play a little bit of game of some stickiness. You guys ready to get sticky? Uh -huh. Representing the girls is Ava, representing the boys is Sawyer. Now, my assistant, Melody, or I like to call her Melody, is gonna put some Vaseline or petroleum jelly right here on their nose. So go ahead, Melody. While you're doing this, you guys can actually play this game at home later today with your family and friends if you have some cotton balls, two bowls, one filled with cotton, one empty, and they have to transport one whole bowl of cotton balls from this bowl to the empty bowl, as many cotton balls as you can, with only using your noses. It stinks. You can't see. I can't see. All right, so you can only use your noses. You're literally gonna go dive bombing in the bowl of cotton balls and you have to shake it off to get the cotton balls in here. Now, the one with the most cotton balls in the empty bowl at the end wins. Are you guys ready? Oh, yeah. Okay, well, this is gonna be the best two out of three, so you have 60 seconds to play this game. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Now, I can hold this one, but you can't use your hands. So, 60 seconds is on the clock in five, four, three, two, one, go. Now, if I see boogers stuck in here, we got an issue. Oh, Ava's got one. She's shaking it off. Oh, we got one. Oh, Sawyer's got one. Oh, golly. Well, come on, Ava. You didn't like plan this or something? Oh my gosh, she got like three or four. Yeah, she's eating them now. You can't eat them. You gotta use your nose. Gotta <laughs> Y'all look like little birds. <laughs> so, <laughs> does that help me? <laughs> You're making Ava laugh so much. She's, there, she's got one right there. There we go. There we go. There we go. She's shaking. She's shaking. Let's see who's in there. She's giggling more than she's shaking. <laughs> she's trying. It looks like a big old hairy booger. Oh, and it flew out of the bowl. It didn't even go in the bowl. Come on. What are you doing? You got a whole bowl right here. Oh, good Lord, Ava. You're not supposed to use your mouth. <laughs> Neither are you. You're supposed to be using your nose. Y'all are silly. Use your nose as much as you can. Yep, there's one right there stuck on your head. 60 seconds is a long time trying to dive bomb, huh? Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, good Lord, Ava. All right, all right, all right. Time is up. Okay, okay, okay. Ooh, right on time, too. All right, let me count, let me count, let me count, let me count. I think I need one. Oh, okay, one. Oh, I don't have any more. I'll give that two. So that's three, four, five. Yep, Ava definitely won. She's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, Melody, petroleum jelly their noses up again. Are you guys ready? She's going to put more this time. The girls totally dominated that one. Now remember, you can't eat the cotton balls, you guys. Okay? I'm pretty sure it don't taste so good. You gotta use your noses, okay? It's warm. Now that's weird, I'm a little concerned now. Okay, are you guys ready? This is, the, are the guys gonna overcome? You gonna, you gonna do this? Wait, you're saying it's cold, you're saying it's warm. No, I hope not. All right, are you ready? Yeah. 60 seconds again on the clock, starting in five, four, don't use your mouth, three, just your nose, two, one, go. Come on, come on. Good Lord, how do you get so many, Ava? Yeah, you can use your hand to hold the bowl, but you can't, nah, you can't use your hands to get them off. Oh, so close, Sawyer. So, there you go. Shake it up. Ava's still working on that one booger, just stuck right there. Ew, ew. Oh, she finally got it. Okay, we're going. Goodness gracious. There she goes, she's shaking. Oh, she's nodding. Oh, it flew right back here. Come on. What's with that? Don't be using your mouth now. That's called cheating. Sorry, you, need to, mm, you didn't even have one. <laughs> You're almost done. You're almost done. The girls could totally take victory right here, Sawyer, if you don't. Ava's headband. I can't eat it on my nose. Are you out of jelly already? Yep. Yep. Just stick your nose. I got you, Ava. I got you. I got you. Time's almost up. And time. Oh, missed. And you got two stuck in your nose. Let's count. Let's count. Ava won. Sawyer had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. More than the first round. And Ava had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Which means the Dang girls it. are victorious. But good try, Sawyer. Good try. How's that look? Everyone show the camera and be like, yay. Hey, guys. Thanks for playing the game with us. Right now, though, it's time to worship God. So wherever you're at, turn the music up as loud as you can. Stand up on your feet. Jump, sing, shout, and clap with us as we worship God together. Come on. Let's go. Yeah.
out of the darkness into your light My heart surrenders to your design You gave me purpose, so I give my life I'm giving you all of me is part of a bigger story. It's a bigger story than you can imagine. It's a big story about a really big God. Discover the story that shows you the character of God.
Hey, I'm Caleb, and this right here is one epic library. The Bible is a series of books that fit together to tell God's one big story. He inspired dozens of people over hundreds of years to write down his words in the form of adventures, of history, letters, words of wisdom, and even poetry. In the Bible, we discover people who faced some incredibly difficult jobs, but chose to keep going and follow through. They displayed amazing determination. And I've got five stories to show you what it can look like. We get started in the book of Matthew. Here, Jesus has returned to life and his friends are filled with joy. Then, Jesus gives them a giant job to do. But with Jesus walking beside them, they can do anything, right? But God's plan leaves all their expectations a little up in the air. Next, we jump forward a few weeks in time to the book of Acts. Jesus has returned to heaven, but he's promised his friends some amazing help from God. Sounds great, except they don't quite understand what this help is going to be like. Then one day, they're all gathered together when the sound of a strong wind fills the room and flickers a flame appear above their heads. And all they can think is, we didn't start the fire. Sliding along into Acts chapter 3, we discover two of Jesus' friends, Peter and John, heading to the temple. On the way, a man who can't walk asks for help, and they heal him through Jesus' power. That's amazing, right? Except the religious leaders don't think so. In fact, they're so threatened by Jesus' friends, they do their best to keep Peter and John from walking out of there. Now, we pick up speed in Acts 6. And meet up with a man named Stephen. He's so filled with God's love and power that the religious leaders decide to shut him down for good. Instead of backing off though, Stephen stands tall and speaks truth because he already knows how the story ends. We wrap up the month in Acts 8. Here, we find another Jesus follower, Philip, who refuses to stop sharing about Jesus. <laughs> See a trend here yet? So when God's spirit sends him out into the desert, Philip's gotta be thinking, what is up with that? What's up is a royal official from Ethiopia on a road trip. Someone with a question even bigger than Philip's. Jesus had gone to be with God, but he didn't leave his followers alone. Instead, his friends relied on the incredible power of God's spirit to keep sharing the true story of Jesus, no matter what it cost. That took true determination. And I can't wait to see how it plays out in you and me. What's up, everybody? It's a new month, which means a new theme here in Kid Nation. Welcome to the first part of our new sermon series called Unstuck, where all month long, we're going to be talking about how we don't need to give up. Every month, we also have a new life app. Here's our life app for this month called Determination. And we like to define determination like this, deciding it's worth to finish what you started. So put this one also in your memory banks as we have yet another memory verse to not only put in our heads, but also in our hearts so we can live it out in our lives. 
It's Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, which says, Let us not become tired of doing good. At the right time, we will gather a crop if we don't give up. Today, we're picking up God's big story after Jesus died on the cross and came back to life. The disciples had seen some amazing things during the time that they had followed Jesus. They saw him perform miracles like healing the blind and bringing Lazarus back to life. They saw crowds gather around Jesus to hear his teaching. Some of them actually heard the voice of God even declare, This is my son in whom I am well pleased. <laughs> Listen, while the disciples had experienced some great things, they had seen some sad things too. Let's recap of what happened during our Easter story. They were there when the religious leaders tried to kill Jesus. They were there when one of their very own friends named Judas betrayed Jesus. They saw Jesus get arrested and put on trial and falsely accused. They also saw Jesus die on the cross and be buried in a tomb. Now that was the saddest day ever. The disciples thought it was all over, but there was still more to the story. Jesus did the impossible. Jesus rose from the dead and came back to life. The disciples were actually there to experience the greatest miracle of all time. In the book of Matthew, we see how Jesus told his disciples to go to the mountain in Galilee. The disciples didn't know why Jesus wanted them to go up to the mountain or what would happen once they got there, but they trusted Jesus and they did what he said. To tell you what happened next in our story, I thought it would be good to play a game of charades with you at home guessing what happened next. But don't worry, PC's not gonna be acting this out for you guys. I'm gonna have a few of our Kid Nation volunteer kids come up and they're gonna be acting out the rest of this story. I'm gonna show them something written on a note card and they have 15 seconds to act out what's on the note card and you have 15 seconds at home to correctly guess what happened next in the Bible story. Now, there is a catch. There's always a catch here in Kid Nation. We have a lot of fun, right? There's a catch. In this first round, their right hand is gonna be stuck to their hip. They can act out anything without saying anything the entire 15 seconds for you to guess, but their right hand cannot move from their hip. I'm even gonna put a sticker on their hand to make sure that they know which hand it is, okay? Are you guys ready at home? 15 seconds on the clock and you have to guess what happened on this mountain. Go. Time's almost up. All right, time's up. Did you guess it correctly? The answer is that Jesus appeared to the disciples on the mountain himself. I know that one was really hard, right? Well, let's do another one. Uh, I want you to know how the disciples reacted when Jesus all of a sudden showed up to the mountain to the disciples. So I'm gonna get another volunteer to do yet another 15 seconds charades so that you have another 15 seconds to guess how they actually responded. What did they do when they saw Jesus? I want them to act it out for you, but here's the catch on this one. This time, both of their hands are gonna be stuck on the top of their head like this. <laughs> they can move any part of their body, uh, but their hands have to stay stuck on their heads. You think you're up for the challenge at home? Okay, 15 seconds is gonna be on the clock again, and you gotta guess what happened next in the story. Go. Let's see if you can guess it. This one is pretty difficult, but maybe at home you've already got this down. All right, all right, all right, time's up. Did you guess that one correctly? If you guessed they worshiped God, you got it. Congratulations. It's not easy, is it? Listen, here's what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 28, verse 17. It says that when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some still had their doubts. The disciples had seen Jesus do all these amazing things, but for some reason, it still seemed too good to be true that he could have risen from the dead. Jesus knew what was in their hearts. And this is what he told them in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. You see, Jesus wanted to remind his friends that he is the son of God. Nothing is impossible for him, but he didn't stop there. He gave the disciples a new mission. I'm gonna get another volunteer to come up here and act out another scenario of what Jesus actually commanded his disciples to do. 
So with this one, there's always another catch, right? This is what this one's going to do, as you still have yet another 15 seconds to guess what Jesus' mission was. Now, they can't say any words, and this time, both of their knees are gonna be stuck together, okay? Like, they can't move their knees. Uh, they can't bend their knees, they can't separate their knees, and you still have to guess what did Jesus command them to do within 15 seconds. Are you guys ready? 15 seconds on the clock, starting right now. Are you giving it a guess at home? What did Jesus command them to do? Time's almost up. All right, all right, time's up again. Any guesses at home? The answer is that Jesus wanted the disciples to go and teach everyone they could about the gospel of Jesus. Jesus told his disciples to become teachers. He wanted them to tell everyone about him. And here's what Jesus said. In Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 through 20 is one of my most favorite verses. And this is what Jesus said to them. So you must go and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And you can be sure that I am always with you, even to the very end. Whoa, that's a big job telling all the nations about Jesus? The disciples were just a small group of people. How would they be able to go tell the whole world about what Jesus had done? They must have wondered, how can this even possibly be a mission? It's like mission impossible. So Jesus' followers returned to Jerusalem. And one day, Jesus led them all to a hill outside of the city near Bethany. And I'm gonna get one more person up here to give you guys another 15 seconds to guess what happened next. Now, there's always a catch. We've said that already. This is number four, okay? We still got a few others, but this is number four. Now in this one, their fingertips on their left hand are gonna be stuck to the fingertips on their right hand, like this, okay? Now they can't say anything, but they've got 15 seconds to act out what happens next doing just like this. And at home, you've got 15 seconds to guess what happened next in our Bible story. Are you ready? 15 seconds on the clock, starting right now. Any guesses at home? Five seconds left. Time up, okay. If you guessed eating a meal, you're right. On that day, Jesus was eating a meal with his disciples. Now that, that might sound like an odd detail to include in the Bible story, but it shows us that Jesus really was alive. They weren't dreaming. Jesus was really back from the dead, living, breathing, and even eating just like you and me. Jesus told them that very soon, God was gonna do something special for them. Okay, we're gonna have someone act out what special thing Jesus was telling them about. So here's another 15 seconds that we're gonna put on the clock. And again, there's a catch, which makes this guessing a little bit more difficult than normal charades, am I right? Okay, this time their elbows are gonna be stuck. So uh, they're either gonna be stuck together like this or they're gonna be stuck straight out. They get to choose, okay? They can't bend their arms whatsoever if they're straight and they can't remove their elbows if they're together. Now, make sure that you guys are still guessing at home. 15 seconds are gonna be on the clock in three, two, one. Any guesses at home of what happened? And time is up. That one was tricky. But from home, did you guess a gift or a present? If so, you got it right. Jesus promised the disciples that God would give them a gift, a gift that would help them accomplish the big mission of going and telling everyone in the world about him. It's one of my most favorite gifts. In Acts chapter one, verses four through five, this is what Jesus commanded his disciples. Do not leave Jerusalem, he said. Wait for the gift from my father that he has promised. You have heard me talk about it. John baptized me with water, but in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Jesus went on to say in Acts chapter one, verse eight, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Then you will tell people about me in Jerusalem and in Judea 
and Samaria, and you will even tell other people about me from one end of the earth to the other. To tell you what happened next, I'm gonna need another volunteer. So they're gonna come up and they are gonna act it out for 15 more seconds at home. This is our last one, so make this one count, okay? After Jesus told the disciples that they would soon have to have that help of the Holy Spirit, something amazing happened. And in order for you to know what happened, they're gonna be acting this out. But here's the catch. You can move all of their body as much as they want to, but their right foot is gonna be stuck to the floor. They can't move their right foot. Are you guys ready to guess? 15 seconds on the clock starting right now. Five seconds left. All right, time's up. If you know the story in the Bible, you may have guessed it correctly. The answer is that Jesus went up to heaven. The Bible says in Acts chapter 1, verse 9, the apostles watched until a cloud hid him from their sight. Then suddenly, two men dressed in white clothing stood beside the disciples. Now that would freak me out, okay? Just oh! The men were angels. The angels asked the disciples, why were they just standing there watching the sky? After all, the disciples had a job to do. People needed to hear about what Jesus had done, and it was time to get started. There's one more part of the story for today, and this time, I'm gonna act it out. I've made it difficult for everyone so far, so uh, they're going to decide what's gonna be stuck on me this time. All right, so they decided that my entire body has to be stuck in place. Now I have 15 seconds and you have 15 seconds to guess what I'm acting out in 15 seconds. Are you ready? Here we go. Did you guess it? <laughs> right. Jesus told the disciples to wait in Jerusalem because soon God would be sending the Holy Spirit to help them. So that's what they did. They waited. Jesus had given his followers what seemed to be like an impossible job. He had told them to share his story and his love with every nation across the entire world. The disciples had no idea where to start, but Jesus promised he would send a gift to help them. So they waited in Jerusalem for the Holy Spirit to come. They trusted that God would give them exactly what they needed to begin their impossible mission. Now here's the really cool part, that Jesus had given us the same mission that he gave his disciples. He wants you and he wants me to tell others about him. We are all part of this big story and we're continuing the work that the disciples began so long ago. And we know that God will help us keep going even when it seems impossible. So here's our bottom line today, Kid Nation. This is what I want you to remember. Keep going even when it seems impossible. Can you say that with me? Keep going even when it seems impossible. So let's pray right now and thank God for using us to also share the good news about Jesus to our family, to our friends, to our neighbors, to people at the store. Dear God, we know that you can do the impossible. Thank you for being with us so that we can do things that seem impossible. When we feel stuck or when we feel like giving up, please remind us of the disciples and how you gave them the courage to take on their impossible mission. Thank you for always being with us and for being a God that we can trust no matter what. We love you and we pray these things in the name of Jesus, amen. From the beginning, God had always had a plan to rescue us. That's why he sent Jesus. Jesus came to die on the cross for all of our sins, for you and for me, so that we could be forgiven. Jesus died, but on the third day, he rose from the dead. He gave his friends a mission to tell the world about everything he had done. And it must have seemed impossible for the disciples to carry out Jesus's mission, right? But Jesus made them a promise that he would always be with them. The Holy Spirit is with us today, just like the Holy Spirit was with the disciples so long ago. And when you remember that, you can have determination no matter what challenges you may face in life. He can help us get unstuck as we choose to live His way every day. 
And remember the mission that Jesus gave the disciples is also true for us today, to tell others about Jesus. God called us to a big mission and sometimes it can seem impossible. But when we remember that God is with us, we don't have to feel stuck. Let's take a look at our memory verse for the month one more time as we close today. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, let us not become tired of doing good because at the right time, we will gather a crop if we don't give up. That's determination. We can focus on the good results of what will happen when we live God's way. Then we can start doing something good even when it seems impossible. So as you go throughout this new week, show some determination and don't give up on the things you start even when it's hard. And don't forget Kid Nation, join me tomorrow at the Kid Nation Facebook page live as we go over our God Time devotionals together and we discuss more about what the Bible has to say about determination. I'll see you then. Hey there, and welcome to A Parent's Guide to the ParentQ app. And if you haven't downloaded the ParentQ app, make sure that you head over to the Google Play Store or the App Store for iOS. That way you can download your free app. So let's go ahead and jump right in. On the first screen you'll see when you open the app, accept whether you would like for ParentQ to send you notifications. If you say yes, you can find out about updates to the app as well as get encouragement once a week. Next, you'll click sign up, create an account, enter your name, email address, password, and then click register. Check your email to validate your account. And if you don't see it, make sure you check your spam or junk folder account because sometimes emails end up there. In the email, click confirm email and then you'll see a screen that says email verified. Once you click continue, you then have the option to sync with your church this allows you to get specific content from your church. To move forward, click Find My Church. Or if you prefer not to sync with the church, you can simply select Do Not Show This Again or Skip in the upper right corner. If you change your mind later, you can always go back in your settings and sync with the church. If you allow ParentQ to access your location, it'll allow the app to pull up churches in your area to make your search easier or you can enter your church name and location and select your church. If you have children or grandchildren who attend different churches, we'll give you the option to select those different churches when you enter your kids in the app. Once you selected your church, if your church customizes content, you'll see a screen that reads, great news, your church participates in the ParentQ app and can customize its content and notifications to match what your child is learning each week. And if your church doesn't customize content, you can still proceed. You'll just see another message that says, good news, your church uses similar lessons to those found in ParentQ, but content may be modified or presented on a different schedule. We recommend contacting your church and asking them to customize this app to better match what your kids are learning. And if you can't find your church or decide not to select one, you can still use the app. Once you see this screen, simply press continue. Now you can add your kids within the ParentQ app. Click Add Child. Enter your child's name, birthday, grade, church. Remember, you do have the option of selecting a different church for different children. Now you may be asking, why all the personal info? Well, your child's age and grade helps us provide age-specific content as well as information to help you understand the developmental phase your child is in. Now you'll notice a few things on screen. In the top right corner is a bell. This is where your in-app notifications reside. If your church customizes content, you'll receive a specific message from your church specifically for the age of your child. In the top left corner, you'll see three lines. Select this and you'll open up a menu of options including a place to edit your kid's information, a link to the ParentQ blog, a link to the ParentQ store, a link to the ParentQ podcast, a way to tell other friends about the app, and your settings for your app. When you select settings, this is where you can change your information if you're having any issues with the app. You can contact us in this section as well. So now that you're finally set up, what will you see every week? Well, at the top, you'll see the number of weeks until your child moves on. Graduation happens at a different time for everyone, but at the end of summer, after graduation, every child moves on to their next, well, phase. 
whether it's going to school, joining the armed forces, starting a new job, or another adventure. Whether your child leaves home or not, they are moving on to their next phase, and this number reflects that. So why do we show it? Because when you know how much time you have left, you tend to do more with the time that you have now. You'll also find content that your church has provided, including memory verses, Bible stories, discussion starters, and cues or prompts to help you make the most of everyday moments. Finally, at the bottom of the screen, you'll see content from the phase project in the section called It's Just a Phase. This is specific to the age of your child and gives you, as a parent, insight into your child's development stage. If you have more than one child entered into the app, simply swipe to the right to view the next child. So that's the ParentQ app. We hope you'll be using this app to make the most of your everyday moments with your child. Whether you're sitting in the carpool line, waiting at practice, or sitting on the couch, our desire is to equip you with tools to have a conversation about faith with your child. If you're looking for more great resources to encourage, inspire, and equip you as the parent, you can visit theparentq.org for more.